good to see you this morning. Um, Good morning. It's interesting when we look look at, at that debate last night and some of the criticisms of the Labour Party, I mean, coming from Nigel Farage, coming from, from Plyde, um, was the fact that Labour just seems to be walking this very easy line, keeping your head down, trying to avoid trouble, but not providing voters with any sort of real vision for the future. Good morning. Well, I obviously refute that very much, and uh, anyone who thinks... It's easy in any way to try and win a, a general election. I don't think has, has tried to win one. But what Labour has put forward in this election are things that would make a meaningful change to people's lives, whether that is building homes so people have a decent place to live, giving more security to renters so if you can't afford to buy your own home, you've got that security at the same time, giving people uh, a chance on things like the economy so we use the transition, the energy transition, to get good jobs of the future out of that. Real differences in tax and spend between, say, higher fees for private education to put that money into more teachers in the state system or not having that big loophole in the non-DOM uh, tax regime the government have announced when they sort of stole some of Labour's policies. We wouldn't have that loophole. We'd put that money into the NHS. So it's real change, but it's deliverable. And look, I, I thought actually that debate last night was, was actually quite good viewing. I wasn't sure having seven people on stage would be that. But for the smaller parties, they can just make you know, incredible promises, billions of pounds spent from reform or from the Green Party. Obviously, that's a, a different challenge for us. We're trying to be the government to get people's support, trust and faith back in us. So our plans have got to be credible as well as ambitious. But I do think they do that. It's interesting, a lot of our viewers accept the fact that you are constantly plugging this idea of change, um, but they are saying you still can't trust Labour. It's, it's been a long time since Labour's been in power, but you know they make promises, but once they're in power, they forget those promises. There's still, how do you get over this problem of mistrust, which still seems to be there very much, very strongly? Oh, look, I think there is a a degree of cynicism about politics in general. I, I found very much when I'm out campaigning and actually before it, you know, you're talking to people at times and they're saying, I've given up hope that politics can make things better because, to be frank, the last few years, politics has made things more difficult for people. I mean, if you've got a mortgage or you're running a small business and Liz Trust comes along and blows up the economy, that's hard, right? You're, you're going to be cynical about that. But I'd say if you look at how... Labour has turned around. It's, it's poll rating. No votes are cast, obviously, in the election yet. But look at the poll rating from that dreadful result in, in 2019 for us. You know, that hasn't happened by accident. It hasn't happened just because the Conservative record is so dire. We've had to change. We've had to acknowledge that. And we are seeing people at the minute say they're willing to trust Labour to put their faith in the Labour Party. But you've got to keep doing it. And ultimately, you've got to deliver for people. And that's why when, you know, in relation maybe to that first question, people saying, make these big promises regardless of whether you can deliver them. Look, we have made things that will make a real difference to people's lives. But we know we can deliver them. We know we can say how we would pay for them. And that's got to be crucial, I think, to winning back that public trust and also breaking through a bit of that cynicism. Yeah, but in, in, in terms of that, what about some... A, a, a bit more honesty, in a sense. We're talking to a couple of analysts an hour ago who have actually, from different sides of the political spectrum, who agreed that neither party can, can get into office and fix all the problems. And they were both saying, well, look, why can't you... Why does no politician turn around and say, well, we can't fix everything, but we're going to prioritise on immigration, the NHS and education, or whatever it might be, and we'll look at other things afterwards. Why is, why is everything spun that, that whoever wins the next election is going to have the golden ticket to make the UK a much better place practically overnight? Well, look, I, I think that's actually a set of fair points, but I, I do think what Labour said and done in this election campaign reflects that. A conversation I've had several times with people is, is exactly that. Jonathan, there's so much going wrong in the UK. I've given up hope it can be better. I don't even know where people would start. And when you look at Labour's six steps, they're about showing people you can make different choices and start to make an immediate improvement to people's lives. So if you take, for instance, that, that point around the NHS, we've got these record NHS waiting lists. Well, by not having that, that big loophole in the non-DOM regime, uh, raising money from that, we're saying you can have 40,000 additional uh, NHS procedures in England 
a week by putting that resource in, by, by changing the VAT and business rates treatment of private schools. We're seeing you can have 6,500 additional teachers in state schools. That doesn't mean that's the, the limit of our ambition, but it's doing ex exactly what you fairly just challenged. How do you show people you can make different choices and start to see an improvement? And I think, look, at, at the same time, you, we can't be criticised for for you know, being said to be not making big enough pledges, but also then leading people to have false hope. There's a tension between those two things. I do think there's a lot to be proud of in the UK, and I do think things can be better. I think you can want that and have that ambition without pretending that everything can be made better overnight. But I do think better choices can be made, and that's at the heart of those first six steps for Labour. And can I just ask you about the Labour, uh, the Labour Party's position on the NHS? Because it, it did come up last night... Whereas, um, I mean, the, the Lib Dems, for example, were saying you know, the, the NHS doesn't need a reformed system, it just needs more money in. Um, whereas Wes Streeting, uh, your Shadow Health Secretary, does seem to be sort of somewhere in the middle, saying, well, yeah, there needs to be more money, but there needs to be reform of the system as well. What, what is the actual position that Labour holds with what it would do with the NHS moving forward? Would we see wide-scale reform? No, look, you... you... Well, look, you, you've just uh, given the position from West Street and the Shadow Health Secretary spot on. Of course, we want additional resource going in there, but we recognise the challenge is a big one and we, we've got to be willing to do things differently. That The kinds of reforms we're talking about, of course, it will still be an NHS which is publicly owned and, and publicly delivered. But, for instance, Wes has talked about pharmacies doing a little bit more so that you can relieve some of the pressure on GPs. We've said on waiting lists we'll use every bit of capacity that's available to bring those waiting lists down exactly how the last Labour government did to see you know, the record satisfaction that then existed in the NHS. So we're willing to do things differently, of course, because Labour created the NHS. It's something that's so dear to us. But we also have said, and they'll be reflected in the Labour manifesto, Again, we've got to be doing a bit more to prevent poor health to begin with. That's everything from how uh, junk food is advertised to how uh, we are you know, properly making sure people are exercising and, and taking the right steps themselves to keep their health in good condition. There's also a whole range of new treatments available, particularly around things like obesity. So you've always got to be looking at what's the health challenge now. We're still committed to the core principles of the NHS. We're still committed to more resource for it. But yes, we'll do things differently. I think that's just a pragmatic, reasonable response to take. Because at the end of the day, people have got to have better health care than they're getting at the minute.